Well, greetings, everyone. Hello, I'm Brother Donnie down here in the corner of your screen. I'd like to welcome you to How We Got Our Bible. Good evening, everyone. Looks like we got us a few on. Hello, Jim. E. Berm, good to see you. Mary Catherine. Hello, Roy. It's Homestead Bees. Welcome in. My name is Brother Donnie. I'm your Bible teacher here for a little while as we have been discussing how we got our Bible. And I do appreciate you joining us as we uh, go through this journey of how we came to have this wonderful English Bible that we have today. Now, tonight, we're going to take another curveball, and we're going to talk about some of the figures as far as those who made a difference in us getting our Bibles, uh, how we have the text that we have today, uh, what were some of the battles they went through, etc. Now, some of these I've already talked about, but I'm going to go through them again. And tonight, these are some of the early, and you'll recognize all these names. If you've been listening to Heroes of the Faith, we've talked about all these. John Wycliffe, you'll see him in the middle, Peter Waldo, uh, the Erasmus, uh, and then uh, William Tyndale uh, is the top. And I forgot to put William Tyndale's name there. But those are, those men are some of the ones that are directly responsible for us having a English Bible today. And tonight we're going to talk about Peter Waldo. The reason is Peter Waldo commissioned the first non-Latin speaking Bible in uh, Europe. It wasn't exactly in English, but it was in something other than Latin. Now, we think, well, what in the world? Why is that a big deal? Well, it's a big deal because everything else was published in Latin, just about especially from the church standpoint. So let's get right in it. Now, I know that you may, may or may not remember us talking about Peter Waldo, but we all, we have talked about him. Now, he is one of my favorites. I'll just be honest with you. I love what Peter Waldo stood for. He helped, if he did not start the Waldensian movement, he certainly helped to carry them down the road a little bit. And I love that about him. Peter Waldo was a wealthy clother and merchant who lived from 1140 to 1205. So we're going, we're going way back in history today, way back in history to 1140 to 1205. He was a wealthy clothier and merchant who had some kind of religious experience. There's a couple of different stories about the religious experience he had, but uh, what he did, he sold all his possessions uh, and he gave everything to the poor. Hey, Tinker's wife. And he started to follow the Lord's calling. Now, there's a note I have for you here that Waldo became uh, fascinated with the concepts of purity and perfection. And he had embraced poverty. He sold all his possessions. Now, I'm not saying I agree with this whatsoever, but he, he took his bride and he, he gave up his bride. He gave up his children, put them in a convent, and he wanted to be and follow Jesus in that way, someone who was poverty stricken. Um, I'm not saying that was the right thing to do, but that's what he did. So he sold everything he had, went to follow the Lord. This was in the dead middle of the progression of the Catholic church and Waldo commissioned monks. And this is why he is even in our story here about the Bible. Waldo commissioned monks to create a translated copy of the Bible for him. The clerics from Lyon translated the New Testament into the vernacular. Now, vernacular means 
the common language. So here in America, our language, most of all, is English. Uh, the language at the time that they were speaking was a was a ancient language called Franco Provencal or Romance, and it's a it's a stem from the Roman language Roman Romance Franco Provencal. That was the language that the Bible was translated in. It would certainly look funny to us today, but he paid to have it done, and the reason he did that so that he could have a Bible to continue to read, but also others could read the Bible with him. And he is credited with providing Europe's first translation of the Bible that was not in Latin. And that's a big deal. And you'll see a statue of them. We don't have any pictures of them. Of course, this is going, this is going way back. Let's see. This is going back. Uh, um, let me say this is 20. What year is this? 2020. Three and uh, now is this 2023? It is, isn't it? And this is going, I'm calculating here. Ooh, almost a thousand years. Is that right? Hold on just a second. Um, you got me thinking now. Uh, this is 2022 minus. Eight hundred eighty-two years, twenty-three something. Yeah, it's a long time, almost a thousand years. That is a long time ago. So we don't have any pictures of what he looks like, but we've got some wood grain. Hey, Patty, good to see you. We've got some wood grain images of, but you know, before the photograph and and even before painting on paper, they did a lot of wood grain stuff, wood cuts, wood carving. Waldo began traveling around Lombardy, which Lombardy was a part of the area over there uh, near France in that European area. And he started to beg, preaching about the value of poverty. And the, reg the region that Lombardy was a hotbed of religious reform movements at the time, many of which would be later deemed heresies by the Catholic Church. You got to remember now, folks, there wasn't no Baptists, wasn't no Presbyterians. They wasn't any Pentecostals. There was no um, uh, assembly of God. There was no what we would consider today denominations back then. There were offshoots of the Catholic Church. There were different variations of the Catholic Church. And they may even be a few people here and there that would not subscribe themselves as Catholic, but not many. Uh, the ones that are kind of offshoots that the Catholics consider heresies were called the Cathars, the Humilati, the Al Albigensians, <laughs> and the Spiranoists. Uh, and as Waldo gathered followers to himself, so this is what happened. He had his Bible translated. He started preaching the gospel. He started going around from place to place, and he started to gather followers. Now, the, the people, they, they just went in to just the way Waldo did. They sold their possessions. They started following him, and they started sharing the gospel with people. And it's really difficult for the historians, historians to try to develop all this information because it was so long ago. But we do know that Waldo and them never joined the Catholic Church as a official way. Uh, and other events may have contributed to Waldo wanting to take up poverty and preach. He rejected what is called the transubstantiation. Uh, and at that time, to reject that would be a capital crime. That was a big deal. To reject transubstantiation uh, was a capital crime. And um, he, he, he came out outright. Um, I mean, he came... Uh, outright against it. And for, for somebody to do that was pretty strong. Um, and, and he also, uh, he, a, a friend passed away during an evening meal. And, and this really had an impact on Waldo giving off fully to the sake of Christ. Now, uh, you'll see to the right a, a funny looking picture with a, a light in the middle. 
This is the Waldensian's motto. And you'll see in Latin there, Lux Lucet in Tem Tenebrius, which, which simply means uh, um, the light shines in the darkness. That was the Waldensian's, that was Waldo's kind of manifesto. Anywhere we go, we can take the gospel and shine it in the darkness and it will bring other men to light. And he he traveled from place to place and they, they had poverty. Now, uh, I want to show you, I, I did not know this the first time I taught Peter Waldo, but you'll notice this picture here. This is actually a gargoyle that's on the church um, over in France. And the gargoyle is a picture of Peter Waldo preaching to the sky as opposed preaching to the people. So the Catholic church viewed him, of course, as a heretic. Now, I'm going to make this brief. At first, him and some of his folks went over to Rome and they wanted the Pope to give him free clearance to preach and to, to you know, take his vow of poverty, etc. And the Pope was fine with him taking his vow of poverty, but he was not fine with him preaching because he was a lay person. He was not a priest. He was not of anything notable. And so the Pope wasn't going to have him preach. Well, Waldo flat out rejected that. And him and his followers started preaching the gospel. They were labeled heretics, and he died being labeled a heretic. Now, his followers, if you did some independent research, his followers were called the Waldensians. The Waldensians are still around today. They're still around today. They are of a, a little bit of, of, of a different flavor, but the Waldensians were ever bit a pre-Reformation group as anybody else. And they loved the Lord. They were treated horribly in Switzerland. I'm talking about treated horribly by the Catholic Church all the way up and really past the Reformation, all the way into the time of Napoleon. They, I've, I've, I've had two thick books I read about them and they had it pretty rough. But the reason I want to talk about Waldo in, in our Bible is that, folks, I don't want you to take your Bible for granted that you have. Uh, please don't just look at your Bible and say, well, I've got three or four of them. You know, I'm okay. Read the Bible. Study the scriptures because men throughout history have given sometimes the ultimate sacrifice to ha help us have a Bible. Now, what's interesting to me is that, and I appreciate y'all coming on studying history. I recognize that most people don't care about history. We're way too much into, you know, cats purring and, and you know, silly, stupid stuff. But uh, history is not a big thing on most people's minds. But the problem is this. We need to be educated on why we believe what we believe because if we don't know what we believe and why we believe how do you know you believe in the right thing and I, let me just give you a plug here uh about reading the bible and studying your bible uh you're responsible when you get to heaven and if you get misled the excuse will not work when well, my preacher told me so i don't i don't work we are, we are obligated to have the spirit of the Berean and study out for the scriptures ourselves. So I want to thank y'all for being here. We will pick back up with another one next week as we continue on this journey of how we got our Bible. God bless you. What a blessing it is to be able to come with you and, and us learn together. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're learning together. And praise God, uh, Jim and I is working on some stuff. Uh, some Bible studies we are working on that will be some interaction Bible studies, some some things to to do uh, where we have more interaction, more uh, inflow from other people, and you'll be hearing more about that soon. But until I see you next time, it's Brother Donnie signing off, letting you know I appreciate you coming. 
I love you. My family loves you more than that Jesus loves you. Now go and walk in him. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Thank you.